listening to the Becoming Who You Are podcast, your guide to authentic living. Visit becomingwhoyouare.net for more resources, tools, and suggestions designed to help you create the life you want from the inside out. Now here's your host, Hannah. Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Becoming Who You Are podcast. My name is Hannah, and thank you so much for joining me today. Today, I want to give you five practical tips that you can use to lower your stress levels right now. Stress is an inevitable part of life. When we have interactions with people, places and things that don't meet our needs, stress is part of a valid reaction that tells us that something isn't right. Sometimes dealing with the source of stress is a long-term job, but it's still helpful to do what you can to lower your stress levels right now. So today I want to talk about some steps that I have personally found really helpful. If you have any additional suggestions of your own, please feel free to send me an email at hannah, that's H-A-N-N-A-H at becomingwhoyouare.net or hop over to the blog at becomingwhoyouare.net and leave a comment for this episode's blog post. The first step I want to talk about is to breathe. This one might sound way too simple to be true, but breathing has a huge influence over our feelings, especially when we're feeling overwhelmed. When we feel intense emotions, quite often we can forget to breathe, not realizing until afterwards when our heart rate is raised and our breath is shallow. Next time you find yourself in a tense situation, simply stop and notice your breath. You don't have to try and change it, Although consciously slowing your breathing and making each inhale and exhale deeper can help calm feelings of panic. Pay attention to what's happening on your breath and spend about 20 seconds just focusing on that. In prolonged times of stress, you can return to your breath as many times as you want or need. Focusing on ourselves helps put outside events in perspective and taking our attention away from our thoughts and focusing on something like our breathing is an incredibly powerful way to just drop that sensation of stress in the moment. The second step is to stretch. When we're stressed, we store tension in different parts of our body. Sometimes this happens so frequently that we stop being aware of these tension areas and they start to feel normal. For me, it's my shoulders and particularly my right shoulder. I spend all day hunched over a computer typing and any tension I feel goes straight into the top of my back. I never used to pay much attention to this until the muscle between my neck and my shoulder totally seized up and that got my attention all right. Physical discomfort is telling us something. When we think of life as an endurance test, we do ourselves a disservice. Those parts that are tensing up and holding on to stress will let us know. And the more that we ignore them, the more they will try to get through to us. It's more important than ever in times of stress to stretch out, identify your physically tense areas and work to release them. Connected to the second step, The third step is to move. And I suggest this because exercise is great for relieving stress and tension and getting up and moving around can help alleviate stress in the short term. Whether you get up and stretch or go for a walk, have a change of scene, conquer a climbing wall or beat your five kilometer personal best, moving acts like breathing. It helps us reconnect with ourselves rather than focusing on external events. When we feel stressed, we generally split into two groups with two different reactions. The first group reacts to stress by feeling like they just have to get up and go do something physically strenuous now or they're going to go crazy. The second group feels paralyzed, wishing they could retreat into a shell. The idea of moving for this second group is hard. Going out and being physically active seems impossible. However, shifting the body often shifts something in the mind too. So it's worth noticing that discomfort, sitting with that discomfort, but not letting it stop you from getting out and moving. The fourth step is meditation. Meditation is an extension of step one, which is to breathe. A basic meditation consists of focusing on our breath and letting go of all thoughts and stories that enter our minds. Meditation has many purposes. It helps us center with ourselves, like the first three steps, and it can also be a way of clearing our minds, letting a solution to a problem come to us naturally. You can meditate with your eyes open or closed. You can do it standing, you can do it sitting, you can even meditate while running. 
The kind of meditation you do doesn't really matter. What does matter is that it's workable for you and that it's something that you can realistically fit into your day and use for stress relief. To begin with a basic meditation, sit cross-legged on the floor or in a chair with your feet on the ground. Set a timer for however long you want, somewhere between 5 and 10 minutes is a good starting point. Either close your eyes or focus on one spot about three feet in front of you and soften your gaze a little so that you're not giving the floor this kind of death stare. You might find that your eyes fall out of focus a bit and that's absolutely fine. Bring your attention to your breath and leave your focus there. Thoughts will come and go, but try not to get attached to them and don't follow the train of their story. When you notice yourself following a thought, that is absolutely okay and it will happen. It happens to everybody. Just simply return your attention to the breath and carry on until the timer goes off. The fifth step I want to talk about today is comfort. Self-care is one of the biggest preventions and antidotes to stress. And certainly in my experience, it's one of the first things to go out of the window when we feel stressed. It's incredibly powerful as when we show ourselves self-care, we show ourselves that we are worthy of love and attention and meet a very basic and crucial need. Self-care can take on many forms. You might have already developed your own self-care routine filled with activities you know are enjoyable and nourishing. It's important to note that self-care isn't exactly the same thing as relaxing. We might find having a drink relaxing, but relying on alcohol or drugs to relax during stressful times isn't the same as self-care. Those things are more like coping mechanisms. If you're looking for ideas for your own self-care routine, you can include things like a hot bath, going to bed early, reading your favorite book, going for a walk in the countryside, and so on. The Women's Comfort Book by Jennifer Loudon is full of self-care ideas and suggestions and I highly recommend it for both women and men who want to be more conscious about taking the time for self-care. At the time of publishing this podcast, I'm also coming towards the end of writing my own book on self-care, which should be available sometime in August 2013. If you're interested in finding out more about my upcoming book or any other aspect of authentic living, please visit www.becomingwhoyouare.net. On the top right hand corner of the website, you will see a box where you can enter your email. And if you do that, I'm currently offering people who subscribe a free ebook called The Five Blocks to Authentic Living and How to Overcome Them. So I hope you will hop over to the website and get access to that, as well as a whole load of other subscriber-only resources. That's it for today. I hope you have a glorious week. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to talking to you very soon. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Becoming Who You Are podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please head over to iTunes and leave a review. You can get in touch with Hannah by emailing H-A-N-N-A-H at becomingwhoyouare.net. Don't forget to visit becomingwhoyouare.net and find out how you can use rational personal development to live an authentic life. Thank you.